Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, FAA approves Gimme Unleaded Avgas STC, float plane inexplicably assailed by Alaska boater, Walt Disney's Gulfstream 1 makes West Coast return. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. FAA approves Gammy and Leaded Avgas STC. The FAA has signed a fleet-wide STC approval to allow General Aviation Modification Inc.'s 100-octane and leaded avgas for use in every general spark ignition engine and airframe powered by such. The move is a tremendous step toward a future of unleaded aviation gas, with Gammy's G100UL now an option for all piston aircraft across the GA fleet. While the FAA approved similar STCs last year, they covered a small range of aircraft. That STC covered some Cessna 172 engines and airframes with expansions to its approved model list to include most lower compression engines. That was a step in the right direction, but they left high compression engines, nearly two-thirds of the GA fleet, outside the STC's purview until now. With this change, the FAA addresses those requirements and makes unleaded avgas available to, quote, every spark ignition piston engine and every airframe using a spark ignition engine in the FAA's type certificate database, end quote. GAMI co-founder George Brawley said that despite the approval, it may take some time for his baby to reach airports at every point in the aerospace system. While the exact cost of the fuel has yet to be determined, Brawley warns that the initial output of G100UL will be a smaller, batch-made product than traditional leaded avgas. And after the break, race week approaches for the 58th National Championship Air Races. Unbridled passion, unequaled performance, unlimited possibilities. Hartzell Aviation, you are cleared for takeoff. Introducing Hartzell Aviation, Leading general aviation companies united by the Hartzell guiding principle of built on honor. A commitment to uphold the highest standards in quality, performance, and support. Hartzell Propeller, Hartzell Engine Tech, Hartzell Aerospace Welding. We are Hartzell Aviation. Now boarding at HartzellAviation.com. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit flyskyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Are you tired of tucking your phone under your headset to make a call and having cords and adapters strewn about the cockpit? Experience wireless cell phone communications and your personal music with Pilot Communications Blue Link 2. Blue Link 2 gives you a wearable link to two Bluetooth enabled devices at the same time and can even control your phone and music. Use Blue Link 2 with your existing headset or a Pilot Communications headset from pilot usa.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some other interesting stories. Race Week approaches for the 58th National Championship Air Races. This year we'll see an impressive return to form for the Reno Air Races. The F-22 Raptor demonstration team will make its return under Air Force Major Joshua Cabo Funderson. They won't be alone, having the Air Force Heritage Flight's P-51 Mustang flying beside them. The Navy isn't going to be left out as the Navy's F-A-18 Super Hornet will provide a TAC demo. On the civilian side, the week will see an appearance by Jim Pate's Aerosports. USAF CV-22 Ospreys returned to service. On September 2, 2022, Lieutenant General Slife cleared the AFSOC V-22 fleet to resume operations after a recent grounding order. Osprey flight crews, however, have been directed to henceforth employ what the Air Force has spuriously dubbed risk mitigation techniques when flying the tilt rotor beastie. AFSOC spokeswoman Lt. Col. Becky Hayes states, quote, Informed by analysis of the data and inputs from the CV-22 aircrew enterprise, Lt. Gen. Slife, AFSOC commander, authorized resumption of CV-22 flight operations September 2, 2022, with risk control mitigations in place, end quote. U.S. DOJ seeks to seize Iran-linked 747-300. Argentine authorities have grounded a Venezuelan Boeing 747-300 that the U.S. Justice Department alleges was previously linked to a U.S.-sanctioned Iranian airline with ties to terrorist organizations. They petitioned the Argentinians to hand the aircraft over to the U.S. 
The aircraft landed at Buenos Aires International Airport on June 8, 2022, carrying a crew of 14 Venezuelans and 5 Iranians. The plane was grounded and searched by Argentine authorities, who discovered a cargo of materials used for military cyber defense operations. Rocket Lab successfully test fires refurbished engine. Remarkably, Rocket Lab has refurbished and successfully test fired one of its recovered stages Rutherford engines. A significant technical achievement in the company's efforts to make its electron launch vehicle the world's first reusable small orbital rocket. Following its retrieval and refurbishment, the born-again Rutherford engine passed the self-same rigorous acceptance test Rocket Lab performs on every one of its engines, including 200 seconds of engine fire and multiple restarts. Data from the test fire showed the engine produced its full design thrust of 21 kilonewtons within 1,000 milliseconds of ignition. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Float plane inexplicably assailed by Alaska boater. It's one of the most bizarre tales in recent memory. A boater on southern Alaska's Kenai Peninsula set out besiegingly against pilot Eric Lee and his DHC-2 float plane. Mr. Lee owns Homer-based Alaska Ultimate Safaris and had his aircraft intentionally harassed by a small fishing boat as he was attempting to exit an inlet with seven passengers on board. The boat, operated by a Halibut Bay businesswoman, charged and harassed Mr. Lee's float plane, passing close enough to compel observers to opine, quote, She's lost it. Somebody's got to do something about her, end quote. At one point, the distance separating boat and aircraft was so close that the propeller of the latter loudly impacted the watery wake of the former. In a phone interview, Mr. Lee said he was water taxiing prior to takeoff when he spotted the vessel approaching. The notion of hurriedly deplaning seven passengers from a sinking high-wing aircraft, if struck, concerned Mr. Lee, who posited, quote, If the boat did actually hit me, how was I going to get them out of the aircraft and to safety, end quote. Aided by a viral video of the August 22nd incident, the U.S. Coast Guard and Alaska State Troopers have undertaken an investigation of the boater and the rationale underlying her belligerence. And after these messages, Walt Disney's Gulfstream 1 makes West Coast return. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Walt Disney's Gulfstream 1 makes West Coast return. In 1963, Walt Disney acquired a Gulfstream 1 that would come to be known as the Mouse. The plane's interior, initially designed with input from Walt and his wife Lillian, seated up to 15 passengers and included a galley, two restrooms, two couches, a desk, and numerous nods to the speech-impeded, anthropomorphized mouse that started the Disney behemoth rolling. Even the mouse's initials were insinuated into the airplane's registration number, which in 1967 was changed to N234MM. Walt ordered extensive modification of the mouse's interior, including a customized instrument panel originally located near his favorite cabin seat by which Walt monitored flight conditions, and a telephone headset via which Walt communicated directly with the pilots in the cockpit. No doubt these modifications enriched the lives of Disney flight crews. The mouse transported notable guests the likes of Julie Andrews and Annette Funicello, as well as former U.S. Presidents Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. 
Comes now 2022 and N234MM, newly repainted and sporting updated wing leading edges and windows, is making a cross-country journey to Anaheim, California, where it will be displayed in a specially curated exhibit in the arena of the Anaheim Convention Center for the viewing pleasure of Disney fans attending the D23 Expo 2022, a yearly hootenanny at which Disney acolytes gather. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.